So you probably notice that Audrey Cow is a story of voices. I think there's 30 voices maybe altogether. So if you're reading the book together, and especially if you're going to read it out loud, my advice to you, and really my deepest wish, is that you have fun with it. Because seriously, I had a lot of fun doing these voices. I mean, I was walking around the house trying them out. I was answering the phone doing them. I was scaring the cat. I mean, I would say that I had an insane amount of fun doing these, but, you know, that would be probably very close to the mark. So let's just say I had fun. So um, I'm going to offer you a few examples, but really it's not like you have to do them this way, just so that, you know, I break home with the silly, no one feels embarrassed, and, uh, you know, you'll discover those, those character voices that are deep inside you too. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so Eddie is Audrey's best friend, and he is a really good friend. He's very loyal, and he's a bit of an innocent. And I know, as I said earlier, that I said his name was after Eddie Cantor, but if there was any inspiration for Eddie, it was probably more like uh, Archie from the Archie comics, or, um, or like a young Mickey Rooney. Uh, I always pictured him a bit nasally and uh, using language that was never bad. Something like, uh, well, uh, jeepers, creepers, uh, you'd like Audrey. Oh, darn tootin'. Uh, she's kind and she's swell and uh, oh, she's real pretty too. Oh, heck, an applesauce. I didn't mean that to come out. It just did. Can we cut that part? There's a bunch of milk cows in this story, and two of them are. Um, Greta and Agnes. Now, Greta really was inspired by the actress Greta Garbo, who is very famous for saying, I want to be alone, right? So here is Greta talking about Audrey. Audrey, she was a dreamer. It was not a lie. She was too delicate for this harsh world of farm. Yeah, I know. For I do was like a delicate daisy. But in time, life will make you into something stronger and, and more resilient. It can be painful, yeah? But what joys do we have? So, you can see Greta's a bit of a drama queen. Now, on the other hand, Agnes, um, well, if Agnes was inspired by anyone, it would have been like uh, Doug and Bob McKenzie, the hosers, uh, our Canadian hosers, and uh, she kind of talks like this. <laughs> well, I like mysteries, eh? <laughs> I like stories involving animals who are like suddenly disappearing off the farm, which may or may not be directly related to an alien invasion. <laughs> Okay, so like this one time, I, I saw this caterpillar, okay, and then like a while later, she was like completely gone and replaced by this big wingy thing, like, whoa, like, what's that all about? Charlton is the rooster on the farm that Audrey uh, grows up on, and um, when all the animals conspire to, you know, get this plan together to help Audrey escape and save her life, they really want to keep Charlton out of the loop, because... Charlton's got a really big mouth, and Charlton is uh, really in love with himself, very narcissistic. I, I always have had an impression of him being this uh, confederate general, right? Comes from old stock, so he's very proud, but again, he's just totally in love with himself. I mean, to the point that whenever he wants to talk about, the, you know, Audrey's escape, he, he can't even remember her name because he's that much more focused on himself. So here's a little bit of what Charlton sounds like. I will be delighted to enlighten you uh, in regards to the heroics that our Charlton III did humbly perform on that illustrious day. <laughs> you see, when I heard the desperate whispers riding the breeze concerning the escape of one poor forlorn cow, uh, whose name uh, presently eludes me, uh, well, well, I naturally did not wait upon ceremony for the concerned parties to come and beg my assistance. Why, that would be unconscionable. Huh? No, I thrust myself in front of those ragtag desperados and declared, Charlton the Third at your service. I dare say they were speechless. Uh, well, that was quite understandable. Had I been in their hooves and paws, I would have been stupefied and in awe of what stood before me too. So, Torchy the reporter. 
as I said before, was not actually based on an actress, but was based on a character that was in a couple of movies back in the 1930s or 40s. And, you know, there were characters in these movies that had a whole different way of talking than we do now. They had really colorful expressions, and they had a different rhythm. And that's really what I wanted to capture with Torchy, because uh, it was fun. I came into the cow caper at five minutes past midnight. For a reporter like yours truly, story doesn't get much better than Audrey's. But I didn't know it at first because I came late to the party, see? See, I'm busy, I'm busy chasing leads on the big bank robbery in Metro when I get a call from Tom. Tom? Tom? Well, he's the Daily Planet senior editor. Torture, he says. Drop the bank hikes and get yourself down to Grover's Corners double time. We got a hot scoop and it's melting fast. A hot scoop where? Listen, Tom, I yelled back. What kind of lousy hand are you trying to deal me here? Without missing a beat, uh, Tom says he's got a cow story he wants me to cover. So now I'm wondering if Tom's all gone uh, soft in his head, right? Why, what are you, bonkers? Have you flipped your lid? A cow story? That's the wackiest slap-happy thing I ever had. And don't get me wrong about Tom. I love the lug, but I wasn't born yesterday. If there's a villain in the story, well, that has to be Claudette, Claudette the Cougar. And I don't want to say too much about her because I don't want to give away the uh, story. But the thing with how I imagine her voice is that it just oozes with menace. And she's very deliberate in how she speaks. Been watching you, Charolais. Wondering if you're dinner. I hear you're dangerous. Are you dangerous? Smelling fear now and mmm makes me hungry. Wondering about you, Charolais. Wondering, but close to deciding. Ooh. So completely opposite of Claudette is Doris, uh, the dear friend that Audrey makes, literally the dear friend that Audrey makes in the forest. And she is precocious and energetic and uh, has a really active imagination. So in the, in the jacket of the book, uh, Doris is trying to sell you on getting the story. So I'm going to read what, what she says in that. Mama says that I shouldn't be telling strangers what books they ought to read, but, but Mama says that I'm outgoing, so it's all good. If you have no problems with stories about brave cows escaping their dark destiny and, and dodging hunters and, and vicious predators, then this book is for you. Oh, yeah! Though there's over two dozen animals who tell the tale of Audrey's great escape. Uh, there's a dog and uh, a pig and a skunk, and a hungry cougar, <laughs> but you can skip over the cougar part like I do, because she's scary, and a fawn needs her nerves calmed when she's reading. But Audrey, she's sweet. That girl is crazy sweet, and this here is her amazing story. Oh, yeah! Well, on that note, I think I will leave all of you to uh, read the book now. And like I said, if you're going to read it together and you're going to read it out loud to each other, then have fun with the voices. Um, play with them, get to know them in the crazy way that I got to know them. And uh, I want to thank all of you for, you know, taking the time to read this story. Uh, it means a lot to me. The story was uh, one of the best experiences I had in, in creating it. And I'm thrilled to know that there's going to be a whole bunch of you reading it all at the same time. Thank you.